in this lab we're gonna talk about loop antennas so these are loop antennas and in particular we're gonna talk about loop antennas of circumference one wavelengths so we're gonna consider lambda circumference loop antennas so we've discussed it in the lecture so i'm just going to briefly go over that for the start of this lab but you need to study the materials in uh, uh, related to lecture so if you remember if we have a loop antenna of circumference lambda this is going to be the distribution of current at one instant in the loop. So that's the, which is, which is very much different than a small loop antenna. When we go to a loop of circumference lambda, as you know from the lectures, it becomes fundamentally different in terms of current distribution compared to a small loop antenna. To be consistent with this lab and the a student manual of lab vault i'm gonna name this y and i'm gonna name this x axis so if this is x this is y z would be toward you so that would be essentially our z axis outside from the whiteboard so this is a, a loop antenna of circumference lambda please study why the current will have this distribution so so if we want to study this dipole, this loop antenna, we can think of it as a as two dipole model. It's just uh, something that you can understand its operation better. So to do that, again, I'd like you to refer to the lecture notes. But essentially, we can think of these two in-phase current as one dipole. And also, we can think of these two in-phase currents as another dipole. That's just one way to think about this system. And of course, they're separated by some distance. And this is now my y-axis. This is now my x-axis. And z-axis would be toward uh, you outside from the uh, whiteboard. Now, if, if we accept this, in, in this situation, what we're going to have is that if, if, you, if you are, for example, sitting in the far field along the x-axis, and you look at this system from here, so essentially, you're going you're gonna, to, you you're almost on the axis of the dipole, because these dipoles are relatively close to each other, and you're almost on the axis of dipole, and you know that for dipoles on the axis, we have a knob. So essentially, you get a cancellation effect here. But when you go to the y-axis and you observe from here, you see two dipoles that are in phase. But then they have some a small separation between them. And when they have some separation between them, then the, the result would be a little bit out of phase. So here you again, you're not going to get cancellation effect like when you are on the x-axis, but you're going to get a very good signal over here. Now, when you are on the z-axis, for example, when you are somewhere here, and when you look at these, this is completely in phase. So the signal would be the strongest on the z-axis. So on the axis of the loop antenna, but I'm going to emphasize here, the loop antenna is of circumference lambda. You're going to get the strongest signal. So that would be the direction of maximum radiation that you're going to have. So if that's the case, let's define what would be our E plane and H plane and so on. So if I want to consider E plane, What's going to happen is that the direction of maximum radiation is Z. And the, what would be the direction of electric field? You see that this is, if we think of this dipole model, that would be the direction of the electric field. So it's going to be along X, and it, therefore it's going to be X, Z. Subsequently, H plane 
that that's going to consist the direction of z that's the direction of maximum radiation is perpendicular to our e plane so it's going to be y z plane so i have x z plane as my e plane h plane would be my y z plane and then in this lab we're going to also consider another plane which is a uh, lab volt user manual call it looped plane so that would be essentially we're going to be performing measurements when the a loop is moving in its own plane so it, the, the plane of the loop is xy plane so essentially xy plane and when i'm going to uh, so when i'm going to do the experiment you should discuss which one correspond to which now to to make an example let's consider for example these this a square loop that we have so we have a coaxial cable and then going to the loop antenna uh, this does not have a balloon in this case now you could of course change it to a loop with a circular shape or you can change it with a loop with a diamond like shape so and we're gonna we're gonna be discussing these three different forms and you're gonna see that the radiation pattern mainly depends on the lengths, which is in, in our case, one wavelength for all of them. Sh shape does not have any significant effect. You're gonna be checking this. Now, let's, let's go by our discussion here. I could replace this with a circular loop and, and have the same discussion. But since I have the squared loop installed, let's go by the squared loop. So if I have this squared loop, so this is my feet coming here, so similar to that. So, and as you see, if I think of this loop as two dipole here, the polarization in this case, the polarization that this loop expect would be the vertical polarization, if you go by this uh, similarity. So it, it would be that. So that would be the polarization. Now, if I rotate my loop 90 degree, again, it's like rotating these dipole 90 degree, and you're expecting horizontal polarization. Now, if, if again, let's, let's keep it vertically. Now, what is the direction of maximum radiation? It's along the axis of the loop. So if you remember, I said, if I'm on the Z axis and I'm looking at these two dipoles, first of all, the distance would be symmetrical to the Z axis and also the dipoles are in phase. So the axis of a loop would be the max direction of maximum radiation so that would be the direction of maximum radiation and then i'm gonna have also null if you remember on the x-axis so essentially if i'm on the x-axis i'm gonna get null so this is essentially would be the direction of the null and also along the y-axis i get a good signal so this would be also a good signal toward this and this way but then again, a strongest would be along the axis of a loop antenna. So uh, the other thing is how to rotate the loop such that we collect E plane, H plane, and loop plane. So essentially we're gonna mount the loop in three different forms and uh, each of them would correspond to one of these planes. Okay, before going for the experiment, let's just, uh, let me remind you of one thing that was regarding a small loop antenna. If we had a small loop antenna, I'm just gonna plot it here. So that would be the direction of currents on the small loop antenna at one instant. So that's essentially, the current is completely circular like that. And the important thing here is that for the one wavelength loop antenna the direction of maximum radiation was along the axis but when the loop is a small so this is a small loop then you in fact get a null in this direction so that essentially corresponds to not null when you have a small loop so this is there is a fundamental difference between them we're not going to do any experiment with the small loop antenna in this lab but I just wanted to emphasize that here, axis correspond to the direction of main, uh, maximum radiation. Here, axis would be null. So let's go and start our experiment with lambda circumference loop antenna. 
Okay, so we have now mounted uh, the loop antenna, a square shaped loop antenna with the circumference of lambda. So uh, we, we're gonna measure, perform measurements here. So uh, if you uh, look at uh, what I uh, talked over the whiteboard, you realize the dimension here that this is the feed and the y axis was along the feet. So this was y and this was our x. So that's our x and y. And then the z would be the axis of the loop antenna. So again, this is our y axis and this would be our x axis. Now we mounted the antenna in a way that the axis of the feet is essentially along the center of rotation and it's going to rotate like that. So now the question is which plane it's it's rotating. Again, this is y, this is your x, and you need to figure out that when I'm doing this measurement, which plane I'm measuring. Is it E plane, is it H plane, or is it the loop plane? But to just, uh, so based on what I mentioned over the whiteboard, you can figure out what plane we are performing measurement in this case. Now, if I go again by the, uh, by the dipole uh, way of thinking about this loop antenna, this loop antenna can be thought as two dipole like that. So if I consider that, then the polarization is of course horizontal because I have dipole uh, horizontally located. So that's essentially why the Vivaldi antenna has been set to be horizontally polarized. Now, now with this setup, I'm going to start performing the measurement. So I'm going to turn on the power and I'm going to press a start acquisition. So based on what you remember, the loop is, is have a very strong reception along the axis, the one wavelength. So we just passed the axis of the loop. Now we are going to the this side of the loop along X. And in here we have a very a small reception. So you, we, get the, we get our null. And again, we are approaching right now the axis of the loop. So we are approaching the maximum. And again, we are going to the side of the loop along X direction. So we, we're going to the uh, a small reception or null of this antenna system. So right now the measurement is done and we can go to the next step. Okay, now for the configuration that we have right now, which is also shown uh, in this figure, we're going to be collecting uh, the radiation pattern in this plane. So I'm just going to uh, apply start acquisition and it starts. On the right column, you can see that uh, this we have 8 dB attenuation in the software and we are approaching a null and then we are again going to the maximum. So maximum correspond in this case to the axis of the loop. Okay, now we've performed our data collection and uh, we can store it as I mean randomly as E plane it's your job to figure out which plane is E plane H plane and the loop plane I'm just gonna store it under E plane so you can see that in this plane You can see that in this plane, the maximum signal level recorded, given all the attenuation that we have was minus 4.82, uh, and the half over wind width is 84 degrees. I can always rotate this so that the maximum signal level is at zero degrees. So uh, we have this pattern. 
So we now go to our second uh, plane measurement. And in this plane, uh, what I want you to notice is that I also change the polarization of the uh, uh, Yagi Uda antenna. Previously, we had, we had it set up like that. So essentially, if, if you consider that dipole uh, representation that I mentioned, the po this would be a dipole for you here. So I can have it here. So essentially, when you rotate, the polarization that you expect is horizontal. So the Yagi Uda antenna was in the horizontal plane. So now this is mounted like that. So when it's mounted like that, now I need the vertical uh, polarization. So I mounted it in the vertical polarization. So that's that's one uh, difference in the uh, in the way that I mounted the antenna. Now uh, the other thing that I want you to notice is that in the let me turn this off to have a better voice quality. So in the previous representation. The antenna was mounted like this. And we know that at the axis of this, we have the maximum, that maximum reception. So in the previous case, antenna, transmit antenna was located like that, horizontally, and I had that. So, and I had maximum from here. So that was my maximum. Now, in the, in the new case, because when I when I put it this way, the polarization change, I have I, I've changed the polarization like that. But then I want you to notice that when the antenna is moving like this, when it's right here, again you're looking at the uh, again you're looking at the same essentially axis. So when you are looking at the same axis, you expect that if you collect this plane the maximum of this ra the radiation uh, pattern in this plane would match the maximum of the radiation uh, pattern in the previous uh, acquisition. So, so because both of them are looking at the axis, so this one could look through the axis right now, and in the previous case that I had like this, we could still look at the axis given the polarization need to be rotated 90 degree and we did that. So when uh, so when we do the acquisition, uh, we're gonna check how close the maximum of these two acquisition match each other. Before starting the measurements in this case, let me remind you of the plane over which we are rotating. So I'm I'm having an identical antenna in my hand. So we are rotating like that. And remember that according to our coordinate, the feed is along the y-axis, so this is my y. And of course, the axis is z. So this is y, and the axis is z. So if I have two pen here, like that. So the black pen is y, and the green pen is z. So essentially, when I'm rotating like this, I'm in the Y, Z plane. So given that, let's start our experiment. So I'm going to start the power. And I'm going to start the acquisition. So I had a little bit of vibration in the transmitting antenna for the table when I was sitting. So I, I put a book underneath and I, I, I brought it a little bit up. So uh, that's why it, in terms of eleva elevation, it's not uh, completely matched with this one. So, okay, now we, we can go and take a look of the radiation pattern that we 
collected. Of course, I'm going to do it another time because this time I was very close when I was explaining. So I'm going to do another one, but I'm going to show it to you on the lab world data acquisition software. Okay, we have now moved to the second plane of the measurements and we're gonna start performing our measurements. So this particular plane that we are measuring at is uh, the YZ plane. So I'm just gonna start the acquisition. So in this uh, plane, as you see, the signal is relatively strong everywhere. That's why at the end, when we want to set the maximum signal level to zero, we might have some issues because any ripples can create uh, a maximum. Uh, the signal levels are very close to each other. If you remember from that dipole uh, representation that I, uh, uh, that I had earlier on the whiteboard, Essentially, in this plane, we have two in-phase dipole, and then they are either have the same distance to the uh, to the observation point, or they have similar distance. So that that's why uh, we get a relatively uh, a strong signal everywhere. So I'm just gonna store that under document two e plane. E plane is just random name here. You're gonna later on uh, tell us that is it e plane, h plane, or loop plane. So I'm just gonna store it. And as I mentioned, I'm gonna bring the maximum signal level to zero. Although it's not gonna be perfect because of these ripples and everything that we have. So this is essentially the other plane that we have. And I want you to notice here that the maximum signal level is, is actually close between the previously measured one, which I now highlighted, and the current uh, one. So in the previous one, the maximum signal level is minus 4.82, and in the present one is minus 4.68. Okay, let's start our last plane measurement of the uh, one wavelength circumference loop antenna. Let's review what we've done so far. In the first one, we mounted the antenna like this and we were rotating the antenna. So one thing that you want to notice here is that there, there would be angles at which the loop is going to look at the transmit antenna through its axis. So that would be the axis of the loop. For example, if the, if the loop antenna is like that, it's going to receive from its axis. In the second uh, measurement, we mounted the loop antenna like this, and it was rotating like that. Again, remember, in this case, there would be angle at which the loop is going to receive through its axis. For example, if it's rotating like this, when it arrives here, it's going to receive through its angle. But now we're going to go to a different plane. And you're going to identify which plane is that, and we're going to mount the loop antenna like this. So now the loop antenna rot rotate like that, and the most important thing is that you're not going to receive through the axis, because the transmit antenna is going to transmit from this side, so the axis is not included. So it's, it's not going to get to the maximum signal level of the previous two acquisition. So this would be the last plane that we're going to measure this loop. So again, it's mounted like that, horizontally like this. And uh, if you also think of the feed that's coming here, you can figure out the polarization of this antenna. So you're expecting horizontal polarization like that. And this would be also horizontally polarized. So if I also want to, uh, if you want to also think about the axis, Remember, this is the feed. So y axis was along the feed. This was x axis, or I can use this, this side of it. So the black pen is y axis. The green pen is x axis. And of course, z is the axis of the loop. So now let's start the acquisition. Let's start the RF power and start our acquisition.
Now, when we are going toward the back of this antenna, you can see the effect of cable and other things. So you uh, then you can better understand the final radiation path. Okay, now the acquisition is done. So we're gonna go look at the result on the lab wall okay. software. So far, we have collected two cuts for the radiation pattern. This was the first one. Uh, this was the other one. And uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna figure out uh, which one this correspond to E plane, H plane, or loop uh, plane. So, so, but one thing that's clear here is that for both of them, if you notice, that included the axis of the loop. So, if you remember, the direction of maximum radiation was the axis of the loop that we set it to be zero degrees here. Now, what I'm going to do uh, is that now I'm going to go to the measurement where, uh, uh, which I was showing you earlier in the previous step and perform that uh, pattern cut too. So let's uh, start the measurement. So one thing that you should notice here from my previous discussion uh, where I was explaining beside the lab vault system, uh, this experiment in particular does not include the axis of the loop antenna. So it cannot get to the maximum of the previous two radiation pattern. So this is something that you should notice here. And we have a little bit of uh, unsymmetrical situation between this part and so let me save this. So you see, you're going to have a little bit of uh, unsymmetrical situation. So this part and this part is not exactly symmetrical. And uh, I mean, you could uh, elaborate on, on the reasons that why this might happen. But the main observation that I want you to have here is that in the previous two uh, pattern cuts, we these two I, these two ones I'm highlighting right now. Here, this is this correspond to the axis. So when because we had axis when we were uh, collecting the pattern. In this one, we don't have the axis. So it, it doesn't get to this maximum level. So that would be something that uh, you could discuss further. Okay, so in this lab, we, we're gonna change the square loop antenna to circular loop antenna. So you see that I have now a circular loop antenna, and then we're gonna test the E-plane cut of this, uh, new uh, loop antenna. So the purpose here is to show that the shape does not significantly ch change the radiation pattern. So it's it's mainly the length or circumference that's important in this case. So, uh, so we have now our loop antenna mounted here. So based on what we've learned, we look at the feed that's going this way. And based on the way that these lambda circumference loop antenna are fed, you can realize that this antenna is essentially uh, could be felt, for example, as two dipole antennas like that. So you have two dipole antenna. These are in phase. So if you think of that as two dipole antenna perpendicular to the feed axis here, so you, you see that the polarization that you're expecting would be essentially horizontal polarization. That's why we have this as horizontally uh, polarized the transmit antenna because we want to measure 
copal. The other thing is, is to, to note that uh, the plane that we are performing is, in this case, is E-plane. And you can also realize that by noting that the, the direct, if you think of this dipole here, for example, the, the, the rep dipole representation, so this is essentially the direction of electric field. The direction of maximum radiation is through the axis. So this would be the axis. This is the axis. And this is the direction of electric field like that. So essentially, this would be your plane. So, uh, so this would be your E-plane. So now you, if you start rotating the antenna like that, you are rotating in the E-plane. Therefore, this would be E-plane pattern. So to, okay, to explain this uh, more clearly, let's consider our circular loop of circumference lambda. Remember that the direction of maximum radiation is through the axis. The direction of the electric field is, is polarized like that. You can realize it by feed. So the feed comes here, and that would be the direction of the electric field. So this is essentially your E-plane. So if you mount your antenna like this, the same way that we mounted over there, and this antenna start rotating like that, you are essentially collecting the, uh, the response or the reception of this antenna with, with, re with respect to different angles within this plane. So essentially, you are collecting the E-plane pattern of this antenna. So, uh, so and when, when this antenna is looking if when this is the Vivaldi antenna like there, and you are looking directly through the axis to the Vivaldi antenna, you're receiving the maximum signal. And this is, this is to some extent, should be obvious. So Vivaldi antenna is radiating like that, and the polarization of that is the same thing. And the maximum reception is when you are directly, when the axis of your circular loop is essentially the same as the axis of the Yagi uh, Uda antenna. Okay, now let us start our data acquisition of the E-plane cut of the circular loop antenna of circumference lambda. So I'm gonna start the RF power and I'm gonna start the acquisition. So as you see right now, I'm going toward the axis of the loop. So that's a maximum reception that I have. Now I'll go to the side, and this essentially would be the null that I'm going to have. So to, to demonstrate that better, this is again axis, so maximum reception. Now, I'm going to again go to the side. To understand the side, think of this loop antenna as two dipole like that. When it's like that, you are looking through the axis of the dipole. So you know that the axis of the dipole is essentially null. So when you are like that, again, think of it as two dipole antenna. And you know that along the axis of the dipole, you don't have a reception. So that's essentially, that's why you get a, you get a, uh, not when you look at the e-plane pattern. Okay, what we have on the screen right now is the a square loop of circumference lambda, uh, the radi its radiation pattern in e-plane. So we want to investigate it, that what happens if we change the shape of the loop, but keeping the same circumference. So to this end, we're going to go and check a circular loop of the same circumference lambda but now as, as you know we've changed the square shape into circular shape so let's see and see what's going to happen with its e-plane of this circular loop antenna so one thing that i should mention here is that these two experiments have been done in different days so uh, so i saved uh, the, ex the experiment for a square loop antenna i reloaded it and now I'm measuring uh, the a square, uh, the circular loop. So I might get a little bit different uh, result because these two experiments might be different in terms of absorber placement, the exact 
distance between the transmit and receive antennas and uh, so but here the main purpose is to check the overall shape of the pattern so now I'm done let me save this okay now I'm saving this as the e-plane of this new antenna that we have and to be to I to be able to compare it I'm gonna move the maximum signal level to zero so this is now I move the maximum signal level to zero so as you see I have now uh, the maximum signal level to zero so when you if you compare this pattern with this pattern you see that they are similar the level of similarity uh, can also be seen in the half power beam widths of these two. The main difference here is about the maximum signal level that could be affected by other factors, for example, the exact distance of the transmit and receive antenna. So now, now that we've done that, let's uh, try a diamond shape loop antenna. Okay, now that we finished the measurement of the circular loop, we're gonna make it diamond-like. So this is gonna be the structure that we have. So as you see, now we've changed it to this shape and uh, it has been mounted here. And remember that again, we're gonna measure uh, copole E-plane. So we need, to, we need to again see that, look, we can look at the feed, and then that would be essentially the polarization of the antenna. So when it rotates, that would be what it expects. So that's why it has been, uh, the, uh, the Yagi Uda antenna has been set to be in uh, horizontal polarization. So, uh, so I'm gonna perform another measurement of, uh, uh, for this antenna in the E-plane, and then we're gonna check uh, the result. So I'm gonna make the RF power on, and I'm gonna start the measurement. So right now, this is the essentially the null. So now we go through the axis. So this is now looking from the axis. So this is the axis of the antenna it's receiving. So that's essentially the maximum signal that it's gonna collect and now it goes again to the side, so that would be my null. And again, we are getting close to the axis of the loop, so that would be the maximum reception. So of course, I need to do the measurement again. This is supposed to be done in free space, uh, free of any obstacle. And so it needs to be done again so that you can see it in the lab vault software. Okay, on the screen we have uh, the e-plane cut of the square loop antenna that we measured, the uh, e-plane cut of the circular loop antenna that we measured, both of which had the circumference of one wavelength. Now we're gonna go and measure the diamond shape loop antenna with the same circumference. So let's start the acquisition. Okay, now we can save them and uh, now when we save them we can be consistent with the rest of the measurement to 
move the maximum signal level position to zero degree now we have this so if you look at what we have this is right now for the diamond shape this is for the square and this is for the circular so you see that they have similar radiation pattern i mean uh, although the shape are considerably different but it seems that the the circumference play a major role i should also say that uh, uh, if i if you, if you wanted to compare them more accurately i should have done a better job in terms of making sure that all the things uh, remain the same between them especially the distance I, I did my best but still the distance can be slightly different and uh, the absorber placement uh, could also be a slightly different uh, the location of the camera that I had these all play a role in uh, when you perform these measurements uh, so but the main message here is the similarity between these uh, measurements